you know he he didn't realize that his solution would actually start an entirely uh, would would inaugurate a new field called graph theory now what was interesting about uh, euler's solution was the intermediate steps that he took in his proof so here's a modern formulation of what euler did euler took the map of konigsberg and he decided to represent each region of the city as a node or a vertex right so for example this region a can be represented as a node or a vertex a here a node or a vertex this island in the middle b uh, can be represented as another vertex this region c over here can be represented as a third vertex and finally this fourth region is represented as a fourth vertex and each bridge would then be connecting two vertices right and the in the, in in the modern formulation of this we call each of these connecting uh, curves which connect two vertices together as an edge and this abstract representation of the map of the city of konigsberg is called a graph so this was the intermediate step conceptually this was the intermediate step that euler took to be able to abstract out the map of the city into some kind of an abstract structure which uh, captures the essential details of the problem ignoring everything else now euler did not use words like uh, vertex node edge graph what we are doing here is we are looking at what he did conceptually using modern terminology now the original problem of the seven bridges of konigsberg can now be formulated on the graph how do we do that what's the formulation well in this graph can you start from any of these any vertex and walk across all the seven edges never crossing the same edge twice that's one formulation another way to formulate it is if i ask you to draw this graph on a piece of paper can you draw it using a pen in such a way that you never lift the pen from the paper once you start drawing it and you never retrace the same line twice right that's another formulation such a graph is called a drawable graph so effectively you know um the the statement of the problem a formulation of the problem which asks for a path which does not traverse any edge which traverses every edge exactly once is identical to a formulation of the problem asking if this graph is drawable you see why these two formulations are the same because if the graph is drawable then the path that we trace in drawing the graph is going to be a path that traverses or you know more accurately which which traces every edge exactly once and conversely if we can walk across all the edges exactly once then we can paint the edges as we walk across them and by doing so we can draw the original graph without lifting our paint brush even once so the two formulations are identical any questions about this so far about the formulation of the problem on the on the graph okay now before we see how euler proved that the answer to the konigsberg problem is no uh let's look at a few modern definitions a graph g is represented as i mean you just saw a pictorial representation of a graph but more formally when we think of a graph it's it's more formally defined as a set of vertices and a set of edges so v here is the set of vertices which we can denote as v1 v2 and so on assuming there are n vertices and each edge connects together two vertices and an edge which connects vertices vi and vj is denoted as vi comma vj it can also be denoted as vj comma vi because right now we are not assuming any directionality to the edges right the edges have no directions uh, you can think of these edges as two way bridges you can think of the uh, the edges in the konigsberg graph 
as two way bridges which allow for traffic in both directions across the edge so such graphs are called undirected graphs in which there are no directions there is there are no there is no directionality to the edges and as you can guess from this uh when the edges have directions on them which we can denote in the following way using an arrow when the edges have directions on them we are going to call these graphs as <coughs> directed graphs and you can in this case you can think of these edges as representing one way streets but the konigsberg graph is an undirected graph because the edges have no no directions on them now strictly speaking in the formal definition of a graph self loops are not allowed self loops of any kind okay self loops are not allowed you can't have an edge going from a vertex to itself and you also can't have multiple edges going between the same pair of vertices so if we ha if i have a second edge from vi to vj or a third edge that's not allowed in the formal definition of a graph but if we allow for multiple edges to exist between the same pair of vertices uh we can allow them but in that case we won't call it a graph we'll call it a multi graph a yeah, multi graph is a graph in which you can have multiple edges between the same pair of vertices and the konigsberg graph is actually a multi graph because uh as you can see here there are there are multiple edges between the same pair of vertices there are two edges between a and b two between b and c and so on now uh it turns out that the property that we are going to look here applies to both graphs and multi graphs okay so uh, it's going to be generic enough so we don't have to worry about the fact that strictly speaking the konigsberg graph is really a multi graph because what what we're going to discuss right now applies to graphs and, and multi graphs so um let me just go back to some reason i'm not able to remove this video anyway let's let me create a new page here so if v sub i comma v sub j is so right now just assume that we're going to be dealing with undirected graphs unless uh, uh unless i mention otherwise so if v i comma v j is an edge in a graph we say that these two vertices are adjacent i'm just defining some terminology before we get into the actual proof that euler uh, uh came up with because you know uh, we're going to be using this terminology in that proof the number of vertices that are adjacent to any given vertex so let's say let's take a vertex v and let's say there are five vertices that are adjacent to v in a graph okay the number of vertices that are adjacent to a given vertex is called the degree of that vertex okay so the degree of v here is 5 another way to say it is it's the number of edges that are incident on the vertex now if we take the if if we take the degree of all the vertices in a graph and sum them together what would be the answer what would be the value it's actually going to be twice the number of edges it's going to be twice the number of edges why because when you consider any edge every edge is going to contribute once when we are considering the degree of one end point 
and another time when we are considering the degree of the other endpoints. So this edge will contribute 1 to the degree of Vi and 1 to the degree of Vj. So each edge contributes 2 to this sum. So this sum is exactly equal to twice the number of edges which as you can see is an even number. Any questions about this? Okay. Well, many times uh, I think they're the ones not getting it may also feel embarrassed to raise their hands. So, anyway. <laughs>